Hello everyone, Crydax here, and welcome back to our compact, clean, and tileable blueprint design series. Today we're going to be working with foundries, the ever-important building to make steel. So, remember this is our early game series, so we are using the blueprint designer Mark 1, and we'll be using Mark 3 belts in this build, or Mark 4, it doesn't really matter. Um, Obviously, you can just replace with whichever belt you have access to. Um, I have been doing most of the builds with Mark IV belts, but I'll probably switch to Mark III just because that's the belt you'll have access to when you have steel, and that's when you get access to the blueprint designer. So, all that to say, a quick update is all of these blueprints are available in a link in the description at satisfactoryblueprints.com. And a couple other links there is a link to Crydania, my Discord channel, which is pretty active. We've got a lot of members talking about games like Satisfactory, Factorio, some people are playing modded Minecraft like Greg Tech New Horizons, which I played through a bit ago. So there's a lot of activity over there if you want to join. And if you'd like to support me making these videos, head over to patreon.com slash crydax and there are different rewards for different support tiers. So, without any further ado, let's get our foundries blueprint going here. So the first thing you're gonna do is get your three foundries. Again, I'm having it point towards the computer because that's the output arrow direction, and I like inputs to come in from the back left and to go out the front left. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, as usual, is get our stackable conveyor poles. They are just kind of inside the shroud distance here. And we're gonna zoop those up to three, four, five, because we've got two inputs for our foundry. And then the output one, we line up right next to it, and that only goes up to four. And then we go on the other side to do the same thing so we can connect our belts. This one I tend to not care quite as much whether it's on that tile or that tile because I'm going to end up removing these stackables and the belt on the end anyway so that when you paste them next to each other it works out a little bit better. Um, yeah, so with foundries it's a little weird. Again, they're not... they're just so big and wide and they have such a huge clearance between them. You can only fit three. And I'm considering working on a six foundry design. I haven't tried that yet. It's a little weird because the outputs, um, they don't line up next, you know, right in front of each other. So you wouldn't be able to put a merger kind of from one to the other. Uh, if, I don't know if I'm making sense. Uh, you wouldn't be able to put a merger like this, right? Because the other foundry would be outputting here and not right there. And so the other thing I've considered is maybe we could do a splitter design where there's splitters on the ground for the different ingredients. And then you've got verticals coming in because if there was a splitter here and a splitter here, for example. Yeah, see, but then a vertical wouldn't fit. So I don't I don't really know. Uh, I haven't I haven't figured it out yet. Or no, sorry, the splitter would be um, here going into two different buildings. Yeah, that wouldn't work, because then the verticals would overlap. So honestly, I don't I don't think I'm gonna do a 6x. Uh, I might try it at some point and see if I can figure out something clean. But for now we're gonna continue with our 3x here. Again, I like things to come in from the back left and out to the front left, but you can face these belts whichever direction you prefer. Here we're doing two belts. Oops, I forgot to do Mark III. I'm gonna switch over to Mark III just because that's, you know, the early game belt you're gonna have until you get to encased beams. This build works with either, obviously. And just like before, we're gonna do our splitters and, you know, mergers. Um, you get less clipping if you put this splitter above this output, but it works either way. And just like before, the splitters are not gonna naturally lock, so you gotta get a lift up there with all of these outputs. Or sorry, these are inputs. And then you can grab your splitter. And it should lock, yeah, the top one. I, I knew there was one of the blueprints where it didn't lock, so we're gonna have to do the trick for that. And I've talked about this in my other blueprint videos, but if you don't know the trick, you literally plop a splitter on the actual lift itself, which I don't even know why they do that. It looks so bad. Um, so I'm not sure why that's a default thing you can do, but it is. And then that will let you snap a splitter to the actual belt. So plop it on the vertical lift and then it lets you snap with control. Same thing again. And then you deconstruct all of our lifts and all of those extra splitters on the top. So we'll go ahead and do that. Voila. And then we can place our lift, mark three. Bada bing, bada boom. And again, you're listening for that click. 
that sound. That means it's linked into the splitter and you don't need those short stubby belt segments between the two buildings. And that's what you want. And then you're gonna do the same thing with the output. Uh, I think it's lined up, yeah, it's lined up with the splitter across from it. So we actually don't even need any snapping assistance. And there you go, your inputs and outputs are hooked up. Let's get power going and then we'll remove these things on the end and we'll be good to go. So power poles on this one, it's interesting. You can put the power pole right through this little bar on the left back part of the frame. And that makes a nice and close connection for the building itself. And then it won't clip with anything um, when we're connecting the, the lines to each other. Because one thing I was worried about with this design was I didn't want the power wires to clip uh, with the items on the vertical lifts, right? So if the wire was going through this gap, then the items would be going through the wire and it would look weird. But, you know, the items don't go past this plane kind of of this front thing, so the wires are nice and out of the way for that. And you can see they're not clipping with the buildings, so we got plenty of space here. I'll make sure they're connected to the buildings. And connected to each other. Perfect. Three connections for that one and two connections for that one. So then we remove our stuff on the end and we will be good to go. And again, if you'd like this blueprint, you can either, you know, follow my build and build it yourself. I think personally, that's my recommendation. Just copying other people's blueprints from online, you know, is far less effective in helping you get better at the game. So I, I personally recommend building it yourself and kind of just following my lead rather than copying it from online. But if you'd like to download it, that's totally an option too. Example, Smelters X3 Mark III. Oh, not Smelters, whoops. We are working with Foundries. And we'll select the Foundry icon. And I will include the connecting them part of the video. Um, I think it's just helpful if I example that. So we'll show connecting them up and then that'll be it for today's video. So let's imagine our items are coming in from the left there. Now, as far as default versus blueprint mode, blueprint mode makes it so that they kind of snap to each other. It is a little wonky, but it works pretty well to at least get it in the either next to the right spot or within one tile of the right spot, and then you can nudge it where it needs to go. In this case, that is actually exactly where we want it. And we can place the second one. And then remember our inputs are coming in here. So now I have to hook up this part in between them. It's up to you if you leave this stackable pole in or not. Sometimes I like to leave it in. In this case, um, I think it looks fine. Sometimes it clips a little bit and I'll remove it. But the important part is just to connect the belts and it will have to connect from that splitter on the last uh, foundry all the way over. So we've got our two belts connected and then we connect power the power pole and then we go around the front and just walk in between the buildings because there's such a big gap I still don't still don't understand why the gap is so big between foundries and then we connect that output merger so now we've got six foundries worth of material coming out here and going in there so there you have it that's our foundries blueprint if you have any thoughts or comments let me know what you think there's a download link in the description and all of the uh, blueprint series I've come up with so far are in that same kind of site so you can find mark 3 and mark 4 versions of all of these Maybe someday when I get to mark 5 belts I'll make mark 5 versions, but I'm not there yet So we're kind of making these blueprints as we go along our own playthrough by the way if you're interested in that playthrough That's also on my channel. I've been just videoing most most of the playthrough not literally every minute but most of it and streaming it live so if you're interested in that go check it out otherwise i'm gonna head out for this video and i'll see you guys in the next one which should be refineries